Welcome to DOS Geek. Yes, this is Linux Mint 19. I know I've been playing in Fedora for a while and I'm still enjoying Fedora, but I had to go give Linux Mint a try. And here's why, specifically because anytime somebody, I'm converting someone from Windows to Linux, Linux Mint is usually what I will install on their machine. There's a couple reasons for this. Number one, I think it's beautiful out of the box. The interface is absolutely familiar, meaning somebody coming from Windows can instantly get in there and start using it. It has a very stable software store. And just overall, it's based on LTS, Ubuntu. Well, there's a Debian version that's based on Debian LTS as well, but for the most part, extraordinarily stable operating system. So Linux Mint 19 came out. Let's just take a look about what Linux says, or uh, Linux Mint says about itself here for a moment. Purpose of Linux Mint is to produce a modern, elegant, and comfortable operating system. I think they've nailed that. Linux Mint is one of the most popular desktop Linux distributions and used by millions of people. I don't think that's arguable. I'd say they're definitely one of the most popular for a desktop. Some of the reasons their success is out of the box. It works with full multimedia support, which is another thing I love. Somebody coming from Windows for the first time is not going to understand licensing issues or why somebody would leave multimedia codecs out, and Mint kind of takes care of that. It's free cost and open source. It's community driven. They are supposed to have a fantastic community uh, and to get feedback from and really take that feedback to heart. And based on Debian and Ubuntu, so you can get the version based on Debian or the version based on Ubuntu, it provides 30,000 packages, one of the best software managers. I would say it's certainly a very stable software manager in the experience that I've had with it. By the way, this is installed on full hardware. I tend not to do many, if at all, virtual box style reviews because I don't really feel like you get to know a distribution. I installed this on my main machine, the Beast, on one of the drives, and it's also installed on one of my laptops. So I've been playing with it and enjoying it. It's been extremely stable, although I have heard some rumors of people having certain issues here and there, maybe with NVIDIA. I think I saw in some of the Reddit posts and stuff, but most of that seems to be resolved. It's safe and reliable thanks to conservative approach to software updates, which we'll get into in a moment because this was a big reason why in the past people kind of um, some of the more experienced Linux users or enthusiast community didn't really like Mint a whole lot was because of their update system. But they've changed that, which is the, the change they did is not only better than the system they had before, but it's a huge upgrade. I love what they did here to solve that problem. So we'll get into that. So Linux Mint. One of the cool things is this is the Cinnamon desktop, but you have multiple options here as far as the desktop of choice. You can do the Cinnamon edition, the Mate edition, the XFC edition uh, as your choice. And of course you can choose whether you want it to be Debian or the Ubuntu base. So this is the Linux Mint Terra there. So you can just go to their page and download it. Right off the bat, you get this beautiful wallpaper. Uh, it just, and people are like, you change the wallpaper in three seconds. Why does it matter? And technically you're right. You are right. But there is something about booting into an operating system for the first time and seeing a very high quality, beautiful wallpaper like this. And I think they did it right here. So you've got your sound controls down here. Easily get into your sound settings from that point where you can change your outputs, your inputs, your various sound devices. So that's fine and very familiar. If you click on your time, I love that you can change your date and time settings right from there. This is what I look at for a usable desktop standpoint that I don't have to go hunting and searching or looking up online to figure out how to change certain settings. It should be intuitive. It should make sense. And when I click on date and I don't want 24 hour and I want to just change it, I want to just click it and change it in a second and not have to mess with anything. And that's one of the things I really like about cinnamon. Now you need to stick around because the amazing thing that happens here is Linux Mint for gaming. I'm gonna show you some of the results I'm getting in gaming and I don't understand it. I've even asked people who are, have been far more experienced in Linux than me, why is Linux Mint so fast with gaming in comparison to Fedora and even Zubuntu? And I'm not quite sure why, maybe it's just a fresh install, maybe it's the hard, maybe it's something on my end, I don't know, but you're gonna see the results. I think it's gonna blow you away. Keep in mind, this has the Vegas 64 and the 2700 uh, Ryzen 2700X in it and 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. Speaking of which, we can go to system info here. And of course, you can just click your main super key to pull up the menu. I love that. And then start typing and search for your stuff. 
So that's very nice. So we got Linux Mint 19 Cinnamon 3.8.8. We are using the 4.15.0-29 kernel. And there you can see some of the specs of the machine. And we've got, of course, the Vega 64 in there. So let's take a look at the MESA drivers here. So this is using OpenGL version string 3.0 MESA 18.0.5. So that's the version of MESA, MESA that it's using there. So when you look at the menu, very nice menu. As you scroll through, I'm not clicking a button. It automatically is showing what is hidden under those various categories there. You can also go to all applications and see everything there. Uh, no, nothing to necessarily customize that, but if I right click, I can do configure and there are some minor changes here. You see clearly I changed the picture and the text of the custom icon. You could click that off and go back to the standard one. I wonder how well it does putting it back once you change it. Look at that, look, it worked, yay. All right, keyboard shortcuts to open and close the menus. Um, we also, let me show you here, have some good tiling ability here right out of the box. Without doing any customization, holding the super key, you might hear that little beeping. And that's kind of a little noise it gives you to let you know you're tiling. But I'm just hitting the super key and holding it down and pushing the arrow keys. And I can kind of tile around the screen, which is really nice. It also has the snap tiling as well. So we can snap it in place. Thought that was all really well done. And of course you can go in and customize those shortcuts. So change all the icons, show favorites, a little bit of customization in the menu, not a ton, not nothing compared to like an XFCE uh, customization capability, but not bad. Again, you can go into panel edit mode. You can edit the panel and change things around there. We can modify it, uh, create new panels, uh, potentially create your own launcher, although it didn't seem super intuitive because it likes to create the whole bar across the side and I couldn't quite figure out in playing with it. And I didn't really spend a ton of time how to shrink it down so that it wouldn't take up the whole side or all the way across. Um, but you have some basic configurations there and ability to add applets to the panel. So there is a nice suite of applets here that we can add, including information on your GPU if you want to add down here, settings, desktop, sound, user applets, workspace switchers. And then if you have additional panels, you can just click on the next panel, which you guys aren't going to see, but it moves to the panel on my second screen, which shows me all the programs that are open. So that's just how I kind of keep it. You can also download additional items to put on here, which is nice. And of course, like this little clock that we can move around by just grabbing and dropping it, we can add little what they call desklets here. So we can add little things to the desk like the clock, digital photo frames, Google Calendar events, those type of things, or download additional desklets. So Mint has this very complete feel, like everything that somebody, say, coming from Windows or Mac even, would come in and expect to be able to do, you can do and more, far, far more, which makes it such a great beginner's distro, but it also makes it a great advanced distro, especially for somebody who wants to get in there, get work done, and not be fiddling with their system because a lot of their defaults are absolutely beautiful. You got some shortcuts here. Did I go through all the notification panels and user settings? You could set your own picture. All the nice little touches are there and they all work. So you can do quick bar over here to get to say your system settings. So we could take a look what's in there, background effects, fonts. We can of course customize and change our theme. I like the green, it defaults green. So you know I'm automatically gonna love it a little bit because DOS Geek green, I mean, that's my color. Uh, you can set up hot corners, preferred applications, privacy. The big thing with um, Mint has always been its update system. So the big complaint, as I understand it, is that basically Mint would give you an option before that would say, here are all the updates. These are the ones that we've ranked in priority. And certain people may not update things like say the kernel patches, which contain major security updates because Mint may decide that it came out too soon. They hadn't had full time to test it and therefore it could break your system. But the arguing side basically said you left people's systems out there to potentially be, you know, left open to a security issue because you're not mandating that update happen. You're not, you're kind of ranking things uh, in your own form. So that was kind of the criticism, right or wrong. I'm not going to get into that argument, but that is gone. Today, if you go in and you install, you're going to get everything installed. But 
there's a cool catch. What they did to accomplish their task of keeping stability, because the reason they did that wasn't because they're just mean people and don't want you to get updates. They wanted to keep your system stable. That was the whole idea. So what they did is they incorporated time shift. When you first boot in and install this and you go to update, it's going to have you ask you to set up time shift. You're going to get two options. The I think it was the butter FS uh, option and let me see here. Was it rsync? So the butter FS option rsync, you can read about them. They have different advantages depending on how you want to save your snapshots. I chose rsync. I thought it had the advantages that I was looking for, but uh, I'm sure both of them are fine. And you can see it's already taken two snapshots of my system. So what happens is if I did an update and it broke things, because say that new kernel patch wasn't fully tested or hasn't been implemented correctly, then I can just roll back my system by clicking restore, just like you could on a Mac. Very, very similar to uh, Mac's time software that they have where you're taking that. So very, very cool way of coming up with a compromise of being able to uh, make sure your system remains stable and make sure you get all of those updates uh, that you can on your system to keep it nice and secure. So, you know, the software manager in here, which I think they call Mint Software Store or Mint Install or Software Manager. Maybe it's just Software Manager. Let's see in the About page here. They call it Mint Install. So, Mint install, very good. I usually use a script. I have a script out there on my webpage. You can download, it auto installs a bunch of things on any Ubuntu Debian based distros and puts all the programs on there. I want, there were a couple on here that I was playing around with and wanted to try. I like that they included PM Manager in here, by the way, because private internet access is definitely one of my favorite VPN services. But uh, yeah, everything worked. I had no issues with the install, no breaks, no errors. Everything I wanted to install just installed. So the software manager seems to work fairly well. And it comes with some flat packs in here as well. And of course, you can enable snaps and install any snap packages you want. As far as the file manager goes, this is Nemo. So Nemo's been fine. I've had no issues with it really at all. It's uh, everything has worked uh, I prefer PC Man FM or Thunar, but that's okay. Um, Nemo seems to have had all the settings for my network drives and everything out of the box, so I thought that was good. So Nemo 3.8.5. Uh, there's also some settings in here under preferences that allow you to do previews of files larger than 32 gigabytes. So that's the image kind of preview file that it would show you on a video or an image to give you that little icon so you actually know what it is you're opening because a lot of us don't really name our files, this one included, uh, correctly. So it gives you that nice preview icon for pictures and things like this. So that will work all the way up to 32 gigabytes, which I've not seen one that high before. A lot of them are limit to about four gigabytes out of the GUI. So I thought that was really interesting. Some toolbar updates here and things along those lines. So. Uh, as far as prepackaged software, you know, it's your standard LibreOffice. You've got your Firefox. Uh, I've obviously added a lot of software in here since then. Uh, I think Thunderbird was on there. Um, I've added some of these multimedia players uh, on there as well. You get Redshift, which is a really, really cool tool if you're not familiar with it. Redshift attempts to basically remove some of the blue light and kind of put a tint as the day goes later on. And this is to help with your eyes and also to help so you can actually get some sleep because there's been lots of studies done that show that uh, having those extreme blue lights and things like that can uh, basically keep you awake. So that's kind of built in by default. And I thought that's pretty cool to have that tool there as well. So right click on desktop gives you create new folder, create document, add desk lists, change desktop background, desktop settings, open in term terminal and open as root, as well as some setting changes there as well. And now I want to show you gaming because this is the most impressive part. So what I'm going to do is show you Tomb Raider benchmarks and the benchmark tool that's built into the Tomb Raider game. And then we're going to compare those stats against the video that I did in Fedora running the same benchmark to show you the difference. And I think you're going to be quite impressed. All right. So keep in mind in the top left hand corner, you're going to see the frames per second cruising on here. In our Fedora test, we got 69.2 for minimum, a maximum of 167 and an average of about 129. So we'll see how this does here. 
looks like it's doing pretty good. Well, pre apologize to all the console users out there. I'm sorry. Seeing those kinds of frames per second must make you cry. Join the DC Master Race. And by master, I mean Linux. It's the only way. Linux Mint, man. Really, really solid performer. Really solid operating system. I've been very, very happy with it. It's not just for noobs. If you just want an operating system that gets out of your way and you can just use it, Mint's a good choice. There are other great ones out there. But Mint's a great choice. Absolutely great. I love the new stuff that they've been doing here. Blown away. Cinema Desktop as well. I hadn't had a lot of experience with it. It was absolutely beautiful. So minimum frames per second in our Fedora was 69.2. This is 86. Our maximum frames were 167. This is 173. So within that variance, that 69 to 86 is a big deal. And then average of 133 to the average frame rate of 129 here. I've seen this average as high as 167, depending on when we benchmark. So really good performance in gaming. Really solid and impressed. I've also played XCOM 2. I want to quit. Thank you. All right. I figure out these fancy menus. No, not benchmark again. Let's do a second benchmark. <laughs> For science. Let's see what we get on this one. So now the card's good and hot. It's gone through a couple benchmarks. Probably we'll see a little bit decreased performance, I would imagine. But you never know. 87 is the lowest I've seen so far. 102, 97, 98. Game doesn't want us to quit out of it. This actually is a really fun game. If you've not played Tomb Raider and you're into gaming, you will totally dig this game. It's an absolute blast. Adventure movie style game. Very, very fun. So we're coming back around to the other side and I think we'll be concluding here momentarily. We'll check out those results. And again, that video is the Asus Strix Vega 64 OC Edition on Fedora 28. Same hardware, same card. You can check that out and see the results at about 8 minutes and 46. So again, much higher minimum at 78. Max frame per second of 182 versus the 167. And an average frame rate of 135. So as it heated up, it actually got a little bit better, I think. That's a pretty good result. Quit game, yes. So these are the results from the video. Again, you can go download it and check it out. You can see me in red, supporting Team Red there, but uh, you can see those results versus what we just got. That was in Fedora 28. So, I mean, Fedora 28's results were fantastic, but the results here were just absolutely fantastic as well. I mean, what am I going to say? So Linux Mint, it's fast, it's snappy. I've had no issues with it. I've run it on the Beast. I've also run it on much lower dual-core a uh, laptop that I have, and it's just as responsive. I have no complaints with this at all. I love what they did with the update system. Linux Mint is fantastic for new users who are converting to Linux for the first time. They make everything very simple. It's also fantastic for experienced users who just want to get in there and work, but still have a beautiful desktop environment. I'm a believer. I love some Linux Mint. Let me know in the comments below what you think. How do you like the changes that they've made in Linux Mint? And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to watch the video.